And today we're going to be talking about career transitions, changing jobs, and deciding what is next. So I know a lot of you might be on the job hunt, so we'd like to kind of get a feel for where you are. We'll tell you a little bit about us, and we're going to talk a lot about getting ready for a transition and then how to execute that transition. First, just a little bit about me. If, you haven't, if we haven't met yet, I'm Angela McDonald. I am one of the career coaches at Udacity. I'm also a corporate trainer. I have a background in finance, consulting, lived overseas for a long time in Australia, China, and Singapore. And I've also created a program called Up Next, which is a career transition program that we're going to talk about today. I uh, created that with Diane, and we will be giving a special offer for Udacity students today. Also, we have Diane Cabal. She is our special guest here today. She's a talent alignment consultant. She helps individuals and organizations grow their talent and has been working in for over 20 years in talent de development. She has created something called create, uh, Career Essentials and Essential Circles. Essential Circles is something you all might be interested in. Again, we'll be showing you some offers today. Uh, it helps people identify their natural gifts and talents so they can get ready for the next step in their career. We'll be talking about some of the pitfalls that people fall in um, as we go through transitions. And a lot of that is sometimes setting the foundation, knowing what we're going after and knowing how then to, to make that happen. So let's get an idea real quick here of where people are who, who are on today. If you can let us know if you are an alumni, a current student or both, if you have the annotation tools at the top, you could just give us a star up there and tell me, are you an alumni, a current student, or both? So you can click on the star, give us a stamp, or you can just type in the chat. So we've got several students, several alumni, several students, alumni, alumni. So Diane, it looks like we have quite a combination, several people popping in that they are both an alumni and a student. I know that's always so impressive, not only finishing that first nano degree, but um, the next one and the next one beyond that. So it's fantastic. Yeah, ambitious uh, group here, huh? Absolutely. Wonderful. So it looks like we have a nice variety. Perfect. All right. And now that we know kind of where you are as a, a student or alumni, let us know in the poll that's going to pop up here, what describes your current situation? If you should see the polling pop up, I am employed and I love my job, or like my job, very content. I am employed, but I want to find a new job. I am unemployed and know the type of job I want to find or I'm unemployed and I'm not quite sure what job I should be looking for. Again, this is anonymous. It's just to give us an idea of kind of who's on and make sure we target our conversation to all of you and help you go through the, the some of the things. Nobody's employed here. and likes their job. <laughs> <laughs> I guess those are employed that really love their job. They're not on today. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's right. <laughs> So we'll give you a couple more seconds. So we've got, it looks like, and I'll, I'll, and I'll show you all the polling that we have here so you can see where we are. But it looks like we've got, we've got a pretty equal spread between people who are employed and want to find a new job, unemployed, and they know what they want to do, or they're unemployed and they're not quite sure. So I think there's, it's very common to be an every one of those steps at some point right in our careers so it's it's good to identify that and it helps us as we go through the next hour or so to talk about what to do in those different situations and think about the transition and the change that we all need to go through sometimes so i'd like to show a few quotes that i think really resonate with going through a transition and and looking at what we want to do in our careers so you might recognize some of these. You miss 100% of the shots you never take. Some motivational quotes here as we think about maybe making a job change. This next one here by Warren Buffett, 
in a chronically leaking boat, energy devoted to changing vessels is more productive than energy devoted to patching leaks. So sometimes that's maybe when we're, we feel maybe stuck in a job and we just try keep trying to fix it, but maybe the, what we really need to do is just change vessels. The next one we have up there, we cannot change what we are not aware of. And once we are aware, we cannot help but change. And that's really that self-awareness that comes at the beginning of realizing that we want to make a change and, and how do we make that happen. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle. So, uh, the, of course, Steve Jobs, we have to have one up there from him, right, as we think about that. So, quick look at the agenda and what we're going to talk about today. And welcome to all of you who are coming. Feel free to join in. We are just getting started. You haven't missed anything. And we are going to be talking through our agenda now. First, we're going to look at self-awareness. How do we discover and leverage those strengths and talents that we have? Sometimes we feel like I talk to a lot of Udacity students who are trying to make a career pivot, make a little bit of a change, and they're really maybe a little stuck in that self-awareness piece. They might have an idea of what they want to do, but they're not really sure which direction to take and which specific job to be pursuing. So we're going to look at some different ways that we can get some more insights into ourselves, how to better understand our strengths and the talents that we have. Then we're gonna look at typical pitfalls that happen in the job search. Being aware of these pitfalls so we can make sure that it's not happening to you. And then next we'll be looking at some career planning tools and resources. Uh, again, we have some special offers for Udacity students and we also have curated some of the best sources out there for some self-assessment tools that don't cost a fortune as many do that you might've run into, all right? So with that, I am going to pass it to uh, our special guest today. And Diane, if you want to give any more introduction about yourself, please do. But if you want to go ahead and I'll leave it here with you and I'll pass it uh, forward the slides along as you are ready. All right, great. Thanks, Angela. Great to be here and great to see we have uh, a good crowd. And it's time for all of you to rocket your career. And we're going to do a quick exercise here and we're gonna think a little bit differently about our talents. I'd like you to think a little out of the box and be creative. And so if you notice here on the screen, we have a number of images. And I'd like you to look at any one of those images that resonates with you and think about how you're like that image. And let me give you an example. So I'm choosing the outlook. And the reason why is because I'm a connector. I like to bring together people and ideas, and there's some kind of spark. There's some kind of flow of energy, and something gets activated. I actually have a company that connects consultants with clients for projects. So there's some sort of like power source and energy. So that's how I'm like that image. And you know, when you do this exercise, when you're thinking about it, there isn't any particular one way to think about it. There's no right answer. And maybe there's nothing here on the screen that resonates with you. So if you don't like any of these images, maybe pick something in your personal space. I'll just give you a, a few examples. So if you look at the dice, maybe you're a risk taker. Or the stethoscope, are you someone who can listen kind of below the surface and you kind of hear the undercurrents? Or maybe you're some kind of expert where you can prescribe something that's going to make uh, you know, the situation better. You know, the ball, maybe you're somebody who brings lightness and you, you know, things roll off of you easily. So I'm giving you a few ideas. Go ahead and type in the chat any of these that resonate with you and, you know, state the item and then how you're like that item or pick something else. Yeah, you can resonate with more than one item. That's, that's absolutely fine. That's great. That means the, the creative wheels are turning. And I'll, say, I'll add, Diane, to, to your examples. I feel like I, I, the two that jumped out at me the, the quickest, first was the suitcase. And maybe part of it's because I really miss traveling right now. And yes, Andre, please share your 
share your um, discoveries there in the chat. Um, but the adventure and trying new things so that that suitcase really resonates with me and also the Rubik's Cube. I love having challenges and seeing kind of things go in order. But then I also like mixing it up and seeing if I can fix it again. I'm a big puzzle person. So, mm -hmm. so we've got the some responses of, coming up. Yeah, someone likes to see problems from all sides and seek a happy balance. Uh, so how are you like the seashell? Maybe you can mention that. Yeah, the Rubik's Cube, they love the challenge and solving those problems. So you're probably a really good problem solver. Uh, the Rubik's Cube, they like complex yet to be systematic. Excellent. All right, so you, you get the idea here. And so this is to help us raise uh, our, our self-awareness. So uh, next we're going to talk about your self-awareness. And this is really important, Angela, next slide, yeah. Um, for you to be able to clearly articulate your talent. You need to be able to let your prospective employer know what you're bringing to the table. So we're gonna think a bit differently. And so next, um, one of the ways to think about our talents is through metaphors. And what's a metaphor? It's a figure of speech where you look at the essential quality of something and it's compared to a powerful image. So think about an astronaut. What does an astronaut do? And type that in the chat. An astronaut you know, goes where no man has gone before, right? Uh, you know, I'd say an astronaut is kind of like a pioneer of sorts. Uh, an astronaut is an explorer, right? Seeks new frontiers, absolutely. Other thoughts about what astronauts do. Th don't they collect data? I think they kind of go to the moon, right? And they bring back some kind of artifacts and the other, you know, scientists study them. And I actually know someone, yeah, uh, explorer, scientist, data collection, exactly, discovering things in space. So there's a whole element of, of discovery, uncharted territory, going into the unknown. Yeah, exactly, surviving. And, you know, this is kind of a, a scary thing. Maybe a, an astronaut is somebody who is a, is a big risk taker, right? So, yeah, you guys are, are getting the idea. So next slide, when one of the sources of our talent metaphors is derived from our childhood aspirations, what we wanted to be when we grew up. So when I was young, I wanted to be a dancer. And interesting, you know, I took dance lessons all through grade school and high school. But, you know, as I got older, my mom was like, you know, you're too tall to be a dancer and you're too big. Nobody's going to be able to lift you, you know, because I'm like five, nine and, um, you know, not a, not a tiny person. <laughs> and she said, the dancers don't make any money. You need to go to college. You need to get an education. And so, you know, I, I actually never became a, a real dancer. However, if you think about a dancer metaphorically, a dancer interprets the rhythms and patterns of the music and they express them in their own unique way. So if you liken music to life, I see the rhythms and patterns of what brings people to life. What are their passions? What, what makes them tick? What are they excited about? So I'm kind of a talent detector. I cannot help it. I'll go to a, a social place. I'll notice people's kids. I'm like, hey, your kid is good in this, this, or that. You should sign them up for something. <laughs> I can't help you know, I've just got this radar up and I can't help but notice what people are good at. And interesting that my company matches consulting talent with opportunity. So I am using my dancer talent all the time. And, you know, a dancer is a performer, right? And so not an accident that I have been in the field of training. I've been a trainer for many years myself. And now my company connects consultants and trainers with these kinds of, of different sorts of projects. And the way that I talk about these talent metaphors is that you are born with these gifts. They don't change. Maybe the form of them morphs or, you know, you grow and there's a new expression of them. But this is kind of what you have been born to do. So if you can identify that, that's where this essence comes from. And the, you know, you heard my program is called Essential Circles because what we do is we name your essence. And so I've worked with 
you know, hundreds of different professionals helping them name and identify their natural gifts and talents. And so this is uh, something that we'll be talking about a little bit more today. So I'm going to give you some examples of different metaphors of a lot of technical people that I've worked with. Uh, we did this uh, uh, Essential Circles program with a company called Schneider Electric, and there was like 25 engineers. I think there were 20 of them that were men, five of them that were women, all technology types. So of course, you know, somebody wanted to be an engineer. And if you think about how you were when you were less than eight years old, that is when your essence is kind of pure and it's not tainted by you're not gonna make any money or what other people think, those sorts of things. And so one of my clients was an engineer and he always wanted to be an engineer when he grew up. So it was kind of easy for him. And some of the things that he does, cause I know this might be some of you, he um, makes educated assumptions. He's really good at figuring out how things work, putting all the pieces together. When he was a kid, he just took everything apart, and put it back together, found ways to improve lots of things, fixing things. And a lot of these uh, folks at, at Schneider Electric that I work with were also like good at building things in a physical way. So some of them had those kind of talents and were working on like the construction types of of projects and they didn't know that they wanted to be an engineer. And you know, these talents, they express not only in an intellectual way, but it could be physically, it could be emotionally, you know, in, in a lot of different ways. Interesting with my dancer talent. One of the things that I do is, you know, I see rhythms and patterns and I notice patterns in relationships. So I see this, you know, all the dysfunction in my family, <laughs> you know, the patterns of behavior and I can like predict exactly what somebody's going to do and, you know, how to avoid it and that, that sort of thing. So you can see there's sort of an emotional uh, level of that talent. Uh, another one to consider is an athlete. And a lot of the folks that I had worked with were like uh, high performers, high potential employees. And so one of them uh, who was, you know, a, a technical person, he played soccer uh, throughout high school. Now, I didn't really know anything about soccer, but I asked him, what position did he play? And he told me midfielder. And I was like, well, I don't know what a, a midfielder is. Tell me, what does a midfielder do? And he said, well, a midfielder is a defensive player, right? They stop plays, but also he did a lot of stopping and starting plays. So he was also an offensive player. And so a midfielder surveys the field. He knows what's going on, both offensively and defensively. He's really good at understanding the game. And, you know, you could say, well, the game of business or the game of technology or, you know, whatever your role or function is. And he was really good at taking strategies and executing them and implementing them. So he was always kind of shifting gears from strategy to execution. So he was very, you know, tactical and visionary, multimodal, if you will. And um, one of the things that was so interesting is that he worked in this organization that was matrixed and they had just gone through an organization restructuring. And so the lines of communication and reporting are really not that clear. And it's kind of difficult to navigate that, but he was so good at being able to leverage the team and understanding you know, who to go to for what, who were his allies. And he was really good at communicating and focusing on the, you know, the team and the organization for success. Definitely, he was a competitor, so always focused on, on winning. So I've given you a, a lot of food for thought here. And so now I'd like for you to think about what did you want to be when you grew up? And if you want to type that in the chat, think back to when you were eight years old or less. And, you know, one, one of the other people that I talked with wanted to be an architect, but go ahead and type that in and let's see if we can make some I, sense of your yeah, challenge. Thanks, Di. And while we're waiting for everyone to type in, and it's so fun to see these, you know, I think that it's funny that there's so much, so far in our life, we don't think about that. We don't ask ourselves that. We don't wonder. And I think sometimes it's even the transferable skills that come through. For me, I remember being really young and wanting to be a, a newscaster and being that like person there with the microphone and 
and I never thought much about it. I didn't go into major in anything like that. And then fast forward all these years. And one of my favorite things to do is teach presentation skills. And I think that's, that's my connection to that childhood piece that I, I find interesting now. But I'll let Very you now get to some of those. Yeah. I know we have a lot. I, I'm seeing a lot of people who knew they wanted to be engineers from a young age, which is pretty amazing. So let's see what else is in there. And I'll let you make some comments. And sure. Yeah, I see here crazy scientist as a small kid, a mathematician. And I know, you know, a lot of the things that you use in the technology world have to do with, with math and logic. So you're able to kind of make sense of that. So I, I've heard that folks in that field need to be good in math. Uh, let's see. I have no idea what a herpetologist is. An Olympic Games winner. Uh, so yeah, you probably are kind of got some qualities like the athlete, but you want to be like the best in the world. So you're probably somebody who's really very motivated, really willing to work hard, um, you know, really putting in a lot of effort. Not a surprise. You're probably one of those people who's the Udacity student and has, has a full-time job. Uh, let's see a travel blogger. So interesting, people who like to travel are typically interested in um, cultures, like to learn um, and meet new people and um, understand kind of the underpinnings of things. Uh, let's see here, a game developer. Well, that one is kind of interesting. You're probably really good at um, coming up with creative designs. I love finding new things. When I write a code, it makes me so excited. Uh, yeah, architecting maybe, yeah. Uh, a musician. So a musician is, is kind of an interesting one too because, you know, you're usually part of, uh, you know, the symphony or a larger band, right? So you probably have a role, you know, one of the, the uh, images was a horn. And, you know, maybe you know when to toot your own horn, when to step up. And also, you know, when you need to harmonize with others. So you're probably really good at working with people. So I, we could go on here forever, but I just wanted to give you some ideas about this is the kind of work that we would do in the, in the Essential Circles program. So Angela, um, I'm going to turn it back over to you. And this is really one of the first steps that you need to take in order to know your talents and strengths. And when you know this at a deep level, you can really be authentic in presenting your talents. So Angela, uh, I'm gonna- Excellent. Yeah, so, so now that, you know, we're, so we wanna take you through as Diane's kind of got that first piece in this essential circles and thinking about, and that's where we wanted to get you thinking about, you know, what your strengths are, what your natural talents are and how you can start to see those combined. I talked to a lot of people through Udacity that say, you know, I really, always wish I had done X, but ended up, you know, parents pushed me to do something else or just ended up like myself getting into college and thinking, well, this is where the best jobs are going to be. So I'm going to be a finance major. I'm going to go into computer science, whatever that is. And then you start looking back and thinking, wait, if I'm going to make a shift, why not make a shift in that direction? I really want to go and, and, and use those natural talents and use those skills and really make it, make it happen to, and make that change meaningful as opposed to just taking another step and not having a purpose in it and having a little more intention in our job search. So, and we'll, and we'll talk a little bit more about Diane's program at the end and we'll have plenty of time for questions. So we wanna just jump now into, let's assume now you've, you, you're at this point where you, you do know what you wanna do, but it's about the job search and, and how to get there. And the few pitfalls we wanna talk about are first, which is kind of what we just covered, we're unclear of those talents, those skills and strengths. We haven't quite figured out what our best talent and skills are to, to know what job to target. The next is the vague goals. So we, so we have that maybe that lack of clarity and then we have a hard time setting a goal to, to know what we're going after. I talk to a lot of people in coaching sessions who are struggling with the job search mainly because they haven't even identified what exact jobs or a handful of jobs or a few companies that they're trying to target to give them something to aim for. Next is really having a lack of strategy in the search. The job search can take a lot of time. It's the more strategy you put behind it and the more intention and planning, the less you're gonna be sitting in front of your computer just applying for jobs. We wanna open that search up and have, have more focus 
but have a really good strategy. And then lastly, I think is not seeking help, not finding resources out there where you can get some help, whether it's a career coach or it's some insightful assessments that we're going to share with you today to help you get that clarity and help you make a plan. And I want to go through a little bit, you know, especially since there are so many of you on either have in a position where you, you are looking for a job already or you want to soon. This is kind of the, the stages of change and transition that we go through. And, and that gray area is, is bigger on purpose. But if we look at first, there's that ending, right? Maybe you were laid off. Maybe you graduated from college. Maybe you decided to change jobs and you quit. Maybe you had to move. And so you had to quit your job because you're moving for a different reason. But that ending is, is important to recognize. We wanna make sure, obviously we don't burn bridges, but it's also really important to acknowledge that it's ending, recognize what you'll miss, maybe what you won't miss, and, and have that kind of, that ceremonial ending piece that you know you've kind of closed that door. Then there's this next big stage in the middle, which the neutral zone, or we call the wilderness. And this is where the navigation gets tough, right? This is where you're in the middle of the job search, you're on that journey, you still might be sad or grieving some things you left behind that you had to leave behind, a job you liked, a place you lived. I know for me, having moved a lot around a lot and having to change jobs, uh, it was always that wilderness stage I found myself in a lot. And we need to find ways to navigate through that because it's really easy to maybe fall back into that, that ending feeling where we're kind of in that grief stage. We want to make sure we're getting through that. Understanding, as you see the pictures, there's going to be days where it feels icky and there's a cloud above us, but we're going to find ways to get through that wilderness. Wilderness. And then and next I'll is say that uh, yeah. just a comment about the wilderness. It, you know, it's it's wider because sometimes that can be a longer period of time, and that's where a lot of the creativity starts to formulate because there's some kind of openness there, and, and there's a need, right? Yeah, absolutely. And finding that and, and letting yourself have some, hopefully, time to self-discover and, and make some strategic moves to make that change be so that you're, you look like that little icon at the end in the new beginning where you're stepping into that new job, you're celebrating that win, and you really have that growth mindset to, to go on to the next uh, step in your career. So let's see where, where kind of some of you are feeling right now. And if you go up to the annotations, you can click either a star. I'm not sure if you all have, I think most of you could annotate it looked like earlier. So if you click on annotate and you give go me- You up to view options first. Yeah, yeah, yeah view and options and then yeah. pick a stamp, draw a line, show me where you think you might be right now. Yeah, somebody, one person in the neutral zone. We, yeah. And I know we have like 30 people on, so yeah. we see a lot more. There we go. And if, and if you're not able to get on the screen for whatever reason, feel free to chat in. And, and understand that every stage is important, good or bad. You know, I think about the endings, even, you know, I think a lot about this year, especially where so many young people graduated from high school or college and they didn't get that graduation, which you can kind of think, ah, oh, is that a big deal? Well, it is kind of a big deal. There's a reason we have ceremonies to, to end something, even if it was something great that we might be uh, excited to move on, but we still need to recognize that that end is there. So it's really important to, to celebrate it, to it's okay to have a little grief, it's okay to feel sad sometimes. The key is we just don't wanna be stuck in that end too long. And we don't wanna be in the neutral zone for an excessive amount of time that we feel lost, that we feel lost for too long. Because part of that wilderness is a exciting exploration and but there are parts of it that that do feel a little gloomy and sad we want to make sure we're navigating our way through there yeah it looks like most people are in the neutral zone and i think that is probably just a common theme across people who are uh, employed or unemployed because so much change is going on and so much uncertainty is happening that many people even if they have a job feel like they're in the neutral zone because they don't know what to expect and how things are gonna change and if they're gonna have a job. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. And I think that we can feel that if we, I've talked to a lot of people recently who had 
maybe pre-COVID had thought about changing jobs and then COVID hit and it was kind of like, okay, I'll just stay where I am right now. But they're still feeling uncertainty. Um, maybe even if they have job security, that's not where they want to be. They want to move on. I know with a lot of Udacity students, as you learn these new skills and you're upskilling, the idea is for a lot of people is uh, you ready to make that next jump. So you've kind of finished that nano degree. You're feeling really excited about it but maybe the job market's not where you want it to be where most of us want it to be. Uh, but there are still jobs out there and we wanna help you navigate that. Um, yeah, Sarah says, I wanna move on, but yeah, is, <laughs> COVID is a big factor as we all know. So thanks for sharing those stages and keep that in mind. And, and actually, while, while we, as we finish up here, I've got a great podcast that is, it's not too long. I listened to recently and it talked a lot about these transitions and I'll share that with you if you're interested. Okay, so how do we avoid the pitfalls? We wanna make sure you're growing your self-awareness, making sure that we, we know what we're after. We have those stri that strength and skills inventory all ready to go. Uh, beginning with the end in mind, knowing where we're trying to get to, where's, where is that, that new beginning. What do we want that to look like? What do we want it to visualize it to be? What do we, you know, name it? What's the job title? Make a vision board, whatever kind of person you are. If it's, is it a spreadsheet showing, you know, uh, bullet points of what it is you want that next job to look like? And again, really having a career strategy that you know what that next step is going to be. Doesn't mean that you have to have like my ultimate, you know, job in 10 years is gonna look like this. It's okay if you don't know that, but know something, shoot, shoot for something out there so that you know you're making progress along the way. And then tap into unique resources that are available to you. If you're still a Udacity student, there's a lot of resources, as you know, in the career portal. If you're alumni and you don't have access to that anymore, we still have some resources to share with you today because I know there's so much out there, it can get overwhelming. So we've tried to curate you a little list. I really like this quote by Stephen Covey about um, thinking about the end in mind and thinking what that goal is. To begin with the end in mind means to start with a clear understanding of your destination, knowing where you're going. What does that job look like? It means to know where you're going so that you better understand where you are now and all those steps you're taking are giving you in the right direction. So keeping that quote in mind as you think about setting those goals and, and knowing what those target roles are. So as you start to identify that target role, where you're headed, look at your strengths, keep clarifying that goal, research job descriptions and start, you know, I talk to a lot of people that say, you know, if you say, well, give me an idea of the job you're looking for. And I'm not, and they'll say, I'm not sure yet. I'm just applying like all over the place. We want to get that focus and start talking to people that have the job you want or you think you want. If you know, if you've thought, okay, I'm going to take this digital marketing course and I've never spoken to anyone in digital marketing, you need to start having those conversations. Start getting that firsthand knowledge. Follow blogs, influencers, and talk to people. And I'll just say, you know, one of the things that people love to do is give advice and you know you can ask them you know what is a day in the life of a digital marketer like and people love to talk about themselves that's their favorite subject and if you ask them for you know their input and how did they get where they're going they'll be happy to talk to you yeah i think that's so true and i think that there's different things de depending on where you are kind of in your life and what what you can share a, a lot of you have great experience that you could be offering them advice as well. So always think that it's, it can always be a two-way conversation. If you're young and you feel like hey, I'm kind of right out of school, I really don't feel like I have that much to offer. Well, that's even a bigger reason for people to like to help you, right? They always like to help the young student who's kind of just getting started. So, you know, really think about people to reach out to. And as, as part of our program, we talk a lot about that those crucial connections and, and figuring out how to strategically reach out to people, not just reaching out to people to say, hey, are you guys hiring? We wanna go deeper than that. So how do you create this strategy? And, and again, there's so many resources and, and 
there's a lot of great webinars where we go into a lot more detail on setting those goals and that you can look at for on the Udacity YouTube site. But what we want to do is show you what we've developed real quick on how to create a strategic job search plan and really making sure again that it has a lot of intention so that your search ends up being way more efficient. I know a lot of people that start the job search again kind of like you know the darts are all just going all over in this like big mass of uh, online job uh, you know online jobs that they're applying for and nothing's hitting because it's just way too spread out and there's no plan when we get together we start coaching they go through a program that's much more strategic they actually feel like they spend a lot more time applying and they see the progress because it has real strategy. So the program that, so we're going to talk, to, so there's two programs we're really talking about today. One is the career essentials or career circles, sorry, um, that we talk about really discovering it as what you want and, and knowing those talents and skills. Then once you have an idea, a better idea of the job you're going for and you're starting on the search, We've created Up Next, which is an, basically an online class with a coach online with you that leads you through the whole job search. So the, it's, a four, it's, it's designed to go over about four weeks and there's four levels. So that first level kind of takes on from the career essentials, creating your vision and mindset, helping you get all the tools you need, getting you a journal, getting organized in that next level, getting your resume, your cover letter, LinkedIn all put together, moving into that network, again, those crucial connections and helping people have a real strategy on reaching out to people. And then finally, excelling in the interview. So the program is, it's self-paced. There's always a coach on the platform that gives you written feedback throughout. And then when you finish, you kind of should have, most people start interviewing through the whole process, but it's giving you all the tools you need. And really, I like to say holding your hand through the job search. Not that anyone re really needs their hand held, but when we think of ourselves in the wilderness and that, in that neutral zone, right? It's kind of nice to say, you know what? You don't have to figure this out. I'm gonna help you through it. And that's really the purpose of this program up next. So- yeah, what, what I really like about it is that everything is in one place. You know, when you're in a job search and you're talking to employers and you're talking to networking contacts and you're doing research, there's a lot of information and it's hard to stay organized and follow up in a timely manner. Angela has created this really great um, tool for keeping you organized. And not only do you have someone to get feedback, as she mentioned, you get a coach, but you can go through it with other people in a community. So other people who are in job search, so there is a, a social aspect to it. And you can not only get feedback from your coach, but get feedback from other people who are also in job search. If you want to test out your elevator pitch or <laughs> those sorts of things. So there's, uh, it, it's just great not to be alone when you're going through job search. It can be very isolating and sometimes, you know, your energy and confidence level waivers and being involved with other people can help that kind of be more stable. Yeah, I think so. And I think the job search is low, can be very lonely as it is. And then put COVID on top of everything where you're not even getting to, to get in. Like if you trying to like meet up with those crucial connections, everything's being virtual. So really finding ways to have more community and reach out to people. So like she said that you, we have cohorts that go through as well. You can sign up for this on your own and do it on your own. But you could also join what we're going to start a Udacity cohort so that there's a lot of people in tech kind of in the same community that can bounce ideas off of each other, network with each other. One of my, uh, and I'm, I'm like Diane in terms of connecting people. I love when I've been able to even connect Udacity students with each other. And I know there was, I had two people and they were from, they were both from Italy, but living in France and kind of in the same industry, one had just gotten a job maybe six months before and the other person was looking for something really similar and they ended up connecting, having coffee together and, and it was great. Like so, and that person ended up helping the second person get a job. And I, I love when those kinds of things happen. So, and that's all because they opened up and talked to someone and shared what was going on with them and what they were looking for. So maybe at this point, 
Um, what I'll do is I want to show you guys, show you all the offer that we have for Udacity students and alumni. And then we'll open it up to questions. And then we have a few other resources that we want to share that are available out there that we think we both really like and think are super useful. So this, this is the offer that we have for Udacity students and alumni right now. And so Essential Circles, again, is Diane's program that is all about figuring out those strengths, understanding your natural gifts and talents, and I'll let her talk about that a little more. So normally it's a $1,500, $1,499, and we're offering it for $799. And then the Up Next Career Program is normally $499, and we have that for Udacity students and alumni for $199. Uh, I will post those links in the chat as well. But at this time, I think, uh, oh, and we've got the first 10 people who register will be getting a free coaching session with either myself, Diane, or one of our colleagues. So at this stage, why don't we open it up? Diane, maybe you can talk a little bit more about your program. I think yeah. it could use a little more detail and then we can sure. open it up for questions. Great, thank you. So you go so ahead. The essential, the essential Circles program has five steps. So the first one I call Talent Illumination, and that's where we're shedding light on your talents, and we actually give you a talent identity profile. You go through a, a conversational assessment process, and we'll talk about those childhood dreams and things like that. And then the next step is called Talent Alignment. How is what you have done in the past or what you're doing now aligned with your talent profile? And then the next step is talent articulation. So are you able to now take those talents that you have clarity about and be able to give examples and talk about it in a very authentic way? And so when you're coming from this place of, you know, your, your childhood, it is natural to you. A lot of times when you're in the job search or you're talking with people for interviews or, or networking is some kind of awkwardness. This gives you this just naturally able to be, be you, if you will. And then the last one I call talent embodiment. And this is where we focus on kind of the mind, um, you know, the appearance and, and the, the way you speak. And so you're getting all of those in alignment. So, you know, maybe you want to be some kind of artist, but you're coming to the interview and you're like in a three piece suit, you know, that isn't in alignment for what an artist would do. Or the opposite, you know, it could be that you, you know, have pink hair or something and you're trying to be in a very corporate environment and maybe that's not kind of the culture. So we try to get all of that in alignment. And then the fifth step is now you take all of that and you go to up next armed with your strategy and all of this great information. So Angela, I don't know if you want to talk any more. Yeah. That. So, yeah. So I thought let's open it up for questions. If anyone has questions at this point, please feel free to unmute or if you're not, if you want to ask your question in the chat, that's okay too. I'm looking there as well. I think a couple questions, I think other people had asked me previously that I thought we'd start with. Can you talk a little bit about if someone does want to discover, if they want to go through essential circles, can you tell us like about how long does that take someone? Um, I'd say you could probably complete it within um, a month or so. It, it depends on, you know, how motivated you are, how much time you have, uh, but it could certainly be done in a longer period of time, or it could be done in a shorter period of time. I'd say that a lot of it is reflective work. So you need to have some time and some space to kind of be quiet, let things sort of surface, and you don't want to rush it. You know, you just, you can't speed up the process. It, it takes as long as it's going to take and everybody is a little bit different. But I'd say, you know, we, we'd have like one coaching session a week with some, um, you know, homework assignments, very similar to Angela's program where it's all uh, in this experiential platform. So there'd be some uh, visualization activity. There's some drawing. It's a really very different way of uh, approaching your talent. Right. And can you tell us a little bit about, like, the, is there a typical age or, t or, or stage of career that, that you work with people or maybe give us some examples on how it's helped people at different stages or ages of their life? Sure. Yeah. So um, the work that we did with um, corporations is folks who are sort of early career. And so I'd say that's maybe the, you know, like first five to 10 years, something like that. We actually do have programs for uh, 
um, we call it career essentials uh, one, where uh, you have someone maybe who is like a director and they're being promoted to a vice president or to a new level. So there's uh, various different versions of it. So you can really be at any stage of your career, but I'd say it's when you want to make a change, when you want to maybe go to the next level um, of your career, no matter where you are. You, you can certainly do it if you're brand new out of school, but you don't have as many experiences to kind of fall back on to know if it's aligned or not. So you'd have to go with things that, um, you know, in your college days or in high school. Great. Yeah, and I think another thing that I, one another challenge that I see people have is when they want to, when they're trying to pivot, right, from, from what maybe even one area of tech into another area, from engineering more into, uh, data science or they're making some type of shift yes. i think having a little more insight and it kind of it helps bring out like those transferable skills that exactly. oftentimes people will say there's nothing i've done in my past that has anything to do with what i'm trying to do now and i always challenge them to say i really believe there's something right there's always some things that, that you've done is if you start looking through job descriptions of what you want to do next and really have a strong sense of your, your talents, your gifts, your strengths, there's going to be some alignment and of, of those skills that you can bring with you. You can't wake up as like a, a whole different person and, and plop into a job. You, you bring with you a lot of experience, a lot of talent, a lot of strengths that you just need to uncover so that you're ready to, to A, to talk about it in the interview, right? To be able to, to kind of sell that and then believe in it yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's pretty rare that someone hasn't done anything that's related to their talents. The thing is that you're not aware of it. You know, when you have natural gifts and talents, things come very easily to you. And because of that, you don't notice that you're really good at it because maybe you just naturally do it. You can't help it. But other people will notice that. And you probably have been involved in some kind of, you know, volunteering or clubs or various things throughout your life that maybe you were actually using those talents in a big way. And so that's kind of what we try to tap into, as Angela said, is those transferable skills. And when you have the stories and the examples and you want to make that career change, you know, from one field to another, it becomes very credible. So that's... That, that's really a big value that you get is you kind of get to draw upon the past and show how it applies to the present. And then people will believe that you can do that job that you've never done before in that new field. I love it. Absolutely. So who has a question? Who would like to unmute and ask a question? Let's open it up and see if we've got few of you want to speak with us today. I was just curious. I didn't understand um, Andreas's uh, comment here. He said, in his case, clients always ask him for what I like less because that's where I have more experience. Oh, okay. So it's difficult to escape that. So people are asking you about the things that you've done before, but that's not what you want to do. Is that right? Or can you, can you explain that a little bit more? Andre, can you unmute and, and give us a little insight there? Maybe he's not he or she's not able to unmute. I think I have a feeling what I've what I've heard other people say is they have clients that they want them to do a certain oh he said one second, please, sorry. Uh, yeah. we'll see if he can unmute. Um, a lot of times working as consultants or the, or someone sees your your resume or your LinkedIn and says, Oh, I want to hire you to do X, but you're really not wanting, even though you know you're good at it, it's what you don't love to do and you're really trying to make that shift. So you keep getting pulled back into maybe that piece of your experience that you just want to hide for a while and go do something else. Yeah, I yeah, so that piece is I about think, I think so Andre is there now. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the thing that um, I have uh, some experience on web development and I, I spent like 10 years doing that, but actually I'm more interested on other stuff, artificial intelligence and so on. And although I studied that things, those things, um, yeah, I didn't, had uh, so much experience on that area. So people continue hiring me for these other things that I did before. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I think that, you know, th that's where something like the essential circles could help you with repositioning because there's probably talents that you're using in web development and I'm not saying skills, I'm saying talents and that's a little bit different. And how can you position yourself in your resume and your LinkedIn profile to talk about your talents, which can be applied in many ways. You know, like I, I talk about the dancer, right? The dancer, I can be a one-on-one -on -one coach. I'm an entrepreneur. I interpret the rhythms and patterns of what's going on in the marketplace and coming up with services to offer. So there's a lot of different ways to apply the dancer talent. And the same thing that you could do with whatever your talents are. But if it's in that traditional and you have this kind of chronological resume or way of presenting yourself, of course, that's what people are gonna see and notice. So how do you begin to shift that and to talk about where you're coming from in terms of talents? Because with, I, I'm sure with web development, there's some things that you could apply to artificial intelligence, right? Are, are there some things or anything come to mind? You can un go ahead and unmute again. Maybe he's digesting that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Any other questions? We still have a few minutes. Okay, we've got one. I'll, I'll read this one out loud to make sure everyone sees it. Regarding network networking, I think it's really important, especially if you're looking to change careers. I've been connecting with people on LinkedIn, asking them about their role, their company, but the responses haven't been great. I've received two to three responses. So how does one go about improving networking? Yeah, you know, that is, uh, and I, if you've gotten two to three responses, you should just celebrate those wins, first of all, because I always tell people when you're, when you're the one reaching out, first of all, it's to you, it's something really important, but to someone who's working and busy and going about their day, it be, sometimes it's not the most response, the, it's not the most important thing on their list, right? So one of the most important things I always tell people when they're, when you're kind of cold messaging and reaching out, Find that one thread with that person you have in common and let them know that. Oh, I see we're both Udacity students. Oh, oh, I noticed we both went to the same university. Hey, I see we both worked for Bank of America at some point. Whatever it is to give them that commonality, that common thread that is the reason you want to talk to them, gives them a little bit of the, the reason or the guilt to think, oh, I should, I should really, I should reach out and talk to Diane. You know, we, I realized we both went to the same school, whatever it is, so that they feel a little more obliged to talk to you. It also makes it feel more legitimate. I think there's now a lot of people, I feel like every day I have however many requests on LinkedIn and people asking, but they're really just trying to get your business. So they're the kind of selling or marketing to you. So yeah. It's you want to not that there's anything wrong with someone selling or marketing to you, but if you're truly networking, let me you want people to know that you want to know like, hey, I'm really trying to learn. Let them know if you've just graduated. Let them know that if you've just changed jobs, people want to help people who are looking for jobs. And, and generally speaking in life, I think most people would love to help someone find a job if they can or at least give them some insight into some information they have that might help you as you're on your job search. Yeah, and I think when you're networking, you want to try to ask them something that they w w would be willing to say yes to or want to say yes to. So do you have any open jobs is probably a, a no, right? Or they don't know. So what could you ask them that they would want to do? So, you know, if you are interested in something that they're working on or you're interested in working on artificial intelligence and you want to get advice based on where you are now and how to uh and you want to talk to people in those roles because this is what you're interested in and you'd like to get their advice people like using the word advice people love to give advice you know like find a way to stroke them uh, stroke their ego if you will and you'll find that more people would be willing to do that. But the, asking the right questions, I think is really important in, in networking and maybe not starting with asking about a job, uh, starting with asking about what you're passionate about and what you're interested in. And that's something that, you know, when you go through these um, programs, 
it helps you to identify those things and you have something to really connect with somebody about like there's a spark there's an energy in that conversation that's what you want to have happen and then you know they become a networking contact not just somebody who's helping you now but maybe you build a relationship and maybe that's kind of the goal of networking right is to have this uh, safety the security net not just now for in the future and I know Angela teaches this about, you know, make it reciprocal. What can you do for them? So that there's a, a two-way street there. Great. Well, I know we're getting close to the end of our time. So I did want to share a, one more, a few more pieces of uh, some resources for you to, to know about. So these are the two that Diane and I have created that we're offering the special on. They'll be available until the end of November. So again, you can join in anytime. The, that link that says up next for Udacity will take you to where we're gonna have a Udacity cohort all in the, in the same kind of classroom, very similar to like you do at Udacity, but it's a class all about the job search. If you would prefer to do it on your own and not in a cohort, you can contact me and we'll make sure that we can get you um, onto that as well. Uh, and Sarah, yes, we can share the presentation. It will be on the Udacity YouTube channel and I can get that channel for you in just a second and I'll post it in there where you can find all of the career coaching webinars. Lastly, we'll go through just a couple other, I think, fun resources that are very affordable and I think ones that are often you find in the market not so affordable. And so Diane and I have kind of curated some, some different ones that we really like. Some of these you might have done at work in the past uh, and you can let us all know what you think of it. DISC, I really like it talks. It's a very, I think, simple is not really the right word, but it's very concise. It helps you understand your communication style at work. If you're having communication uh, issues or if you felt like you maybe have had some challenges in the past or you're getting ready to work for a new manager that has a different style, I think DISC is really good for understanding your communication style. Um, Diane, maybe I, so I can go on to my, uh, computer here and look for those other two sources. Could you talk a little bit about the Strengths Finder in the Enneagram? Sure. Yeah, so the Strengths Finder, there's um, a tool here and this is the one to the to the book, correct? Or is this the, the online test? Yeah, that link gets you to the book and then you get the code where you can then yeah, go to so, the Yeah, so there, there are 34 strengths and um, you can take a test that gives you your top five. And when I work with the essential circles, we only identify your top five because those are what you want to focus on. If you can find a job where you're using all your strengths, you're going to be a happy camper. And then the Enneagram gets at your motivators and it actually works really well with the essential circles. It aligns with your childhood patterns, if you will. And so there are two tests there when you go on the link. This one's only uh, $12. And you want to take the READY test, R-H-E-I-E-T-I. -E -E and so that one will get you information kind of uh, on your whole self. It isn't just work, it's you, you as a, a whole person. So that's kind of a, a neat thing because it looks at you more broadly. Uh, someone asked about a podcast that you mentioned, Angela. They were yeah. Really yeah, I'm going to put that in now. So it's the Reboot Podcast. It's the Reboot Extras number 10 leading through transitions. So uh, what do all the podcasts say at the end? You can find that wherever you listen to your podcasts. <laughs> um, I'm pretty <laughs> sure mine was on Spotify, but I'm sure it's on all the, you know, this, they all seem to be everywhere now. Um, so it's leading through transitions. So I'll send that. And then I need to stop sharing to go get the other link for you all. So one thing I'll do really quick here is I'll just put all of these links in the chat. And while I'm getting the YouTube channel so that you all have that handy, is there anything else? Anyone who wants to ask any questions, open it up, anything on your mind, related or not. And I will go ahead at this point and stop recording so we have a nice clear end to our recording. So thanks those of you who are listening now in the recorded version, thanks for listening. And I will put up our email addresses in case there's someone that wants to contact us directly. And I will stop recording now, and then I will stop sharing and get the YouTube channel so everyone can see this later. And it, again, if you're on live right now, feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question. We'll be here for a couple minutes. <laughs>